That's what Marshes are. Good, yeah. That believe that I don't have to belong to a local church. That's a marsh. Diseases hanging out. Critters in the natural and in the spirit. You get what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So then whatever uh, measure that the marshes have, whatever uh, capacity it has, it can't draw from anything other than itself. Right? The only thing it can do, it can't grow. It can grow. It has to grow from the water supply from above. But it can't grow from the, the streams that's in the earth. So it always has to depend on something coming from the heavens. We always waiting on something to happen, from, you know. And that's good because all rivers are, it is comp 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 comprised of the clouds, and, and you know that's a whole navigation. It's a whole system up there. You get what I'm saying? Precipitation and all that stuff. I'm, but I'm just saying I'm trying to abbreviate and tell you that we can't be marshes. We can't have private puddles. Private puddles. Huh? We can't just be disengaged from the whole body and call ourselves whatever we want to call ourselves. Because if you become a marsh, you can call yourself anything. You can, you can tell yourself, I'm a, a five-fold debonair. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a apostle. Uh, no, I'm a chief, I'm a chief apostle, apostle. Bishop, Archbishop, Pastor, Teacher, Glow in the Dark, <laughs> Raise the Dead, Walk Through Walls. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You ain't got room on a business card no more. You got something to do something. <laughs> uh, you get what I'm saying? That's what happened. But <laughs> you had to turn it over on the back. I'll never forget, I was sitting down a few years ago when, before I started ministry. I was minding my own business. And you know anything, if I'm eating. Do not mess with me. So I, I'm sitting there by myself. I wasn't married at the time. I was just over. We had corporate prayer. So I hung out on the road all day when we had corporate prayer on Saturday. So I said, you know, just drive it back and forth. Just not, you know, nonsense. So I had to go to the mall. And so I went to breakfast. I'm sitting there eating. And this old bishop come up in there. One said, he was trying to sell something. And uh, I said, hey, you know, I'm, I was just really trying to be, you know, nice to him. And I'm sitting there minding my own business. And uh, no, a deacon. Did I say deacon? Deacon. He was a deacon. And so I'm sitting there eating, and this deacon tell me, well, he, he gave me a card with deacon on it. <laughs> and I read the card, I skipped deacon. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, I read his name, he told me, he said, no, 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 it's deacon so-and-so. Oh, I'm like, oh, I'm like, you know, in me, I'm like, this dude just don't know. <laughs> I'm sitting over here, my Belgian wobble getting going. I ain't got time to try to figure out if you got a certain name or not. I'm a name minister. I couldn't do that. I'm a prophet. But I just told him, say, whatever, dude. But that just show you how petty we are. Those, those are the mentalities that we have to address in the church. And we're going to have to get uh, viable, valid, genuine, authentic ministries that can stand up and say, no, this is the way we walk in it. You know what I'm saying? You can't take a title upon yourself. You know, according to the Bible, titles came through the land on the hands and prophecy. You couldn't just get it because somebody outside of a local assembly that just met you and, and then you had a good time in the morning and you had soul glow on you and then somebody wanted soul glow. Then somebody wanted to tell you, man, there's an anointing, there's a prophetic anointing, an apostolic anointing on you. And you don't even consider the source. I have a hard time for anybody giving me a prophetic word that is not planted in a body. You gotta be planted. You have to be planted. You gotta have some roots. If you got, let me tell you something. Let me just help you out. Those that are watching, somebody watching me can know exactly what I'm saying. If they don't have, if they got wings without roots, leave them alone. They gotta have roots first before they get wings. Before they wanna fly out, become great, known, and all that stuff. Check the roots, check the foundation. I've told people, I said, what church are you a part of? <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, um, you know, I'm in between. I said, all right, all right. Well, don't get me caught up in why you in between. In my mind, I said, okay, thank you. And I just hold it. If it's God, it'll come to pass. If not, I'm not going to lose no sleep on it. Yeah. Try to pronosticate and help the, the, the diviner bring that prophetic word to, to pass because that's exactly what it is. Because the gift and calling without repentance. 
And I'm here, I'm here to tell you that when you listen to a voice outside of authority and structure, it can taint you. It can sow a seed of discord in you. I don't live my, I'm telling you, I've been strong in the Lord for uh, pastoring. I've been saved, well, let me see, for a long time, since 1990. And I've been outside of the four walls, even in prison when I first got saved for a long time. I got out in 93, so this is 2016. So I've been at this thing a long time. And I've laid a foundation. It may have been meticulously slow, but nonetheless, it's fruitful to me. So don't get too much in a hurry. These are the things that are marshes that stagnate the flow of the house and disrupt the whole design because there's an eternal purpose that God has reserved for the whole body, not just for a church on a block, the whole body. The whole body. Amen? And so we got to get that in our spirit. And one of the perfect pictures we seen when we stopped at was in 2 Kings. Let's go there. The second chapter. 2 Kings 2. I hope you guys are getting this. Get this in your spirit. Hallelujah. Maybe Brother Marcus to help you out. 19, verse 19. I like this story because it's a great story to, to teach and train up prophetic people. You know, sons of the prophet was in different places. They, 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 didn't, they really didn't want nothing. They just didn't want to make sure Elijah didn't get that. He get ready to leave you. He get ready to leave you. They went back to El Jericho and Jordan. They kept telling him, you get ready to leave you, talking about Elijah. You know, and, and it was this time of transition. And Elijah had forewarned them that he get ready to get promoted. He get ready to leave the scene. And you know the story, he left his anointing behind. He left his anointing behind. And that anointing, that mantle that fell in the, fell in the earth after the, the chariots of Israel took Elijah up. Remember that story? That part further up in the chapter? Profound, profound experience still applicable for us today. And it says in the 19th verse, And the men of the city said unto Elijah, Behold, I pray thee, the situation of this city is pleasant as my Lord seeth, but the water is not, and the ground is bare. You see it? The, the water is not, but the ground is barren. And this speaks to us of some present conditions in the body, even in the city of Joliet. Amen. That the water is not. You know that water in Scripture is Ephesians 5 and 26 that is the washing of the water of the Word. Anybody ever heard that before? Mm -hmm. so, so we can say that it's the Word of God. The Word of God at the time was at not. Because of whatever was transpired. But it, it had a good name. It was a pleasant city. That's an adjective, man. It had a good name. But their supply was off. So you can have a form. But you can deny the power thereof. So even though the building is good, even though you got plenty of parking, huh? even, though, even though you got a rich heritage, meaning that great, great, Great grandmama them. Mm -hmm. Was raised in that church, that shrine, that mausoleum. Come on. Mm -hmm. That auditorium. Mm -hmm. But how you gonna leave because I'm a disrespect. Great, great, great grandmama them and then heaven talking about looking over the balcony and saying, telling you, leave! Get out of there! Fulfill your assignment in the earth! I guarantee you, you can, if the Holy Spirit can let you hear what they're telling you, it won't be the signal that you own. <laughs> It'll be a whole new signal. They're trying to tell you on the finish because they waiting to come here while we sitting here playing church games. So you sit around here and we just get fascinated with personalities and programs and procedures and all that and protocol. But we should be fascinated with the power of the Holy Ghost. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? I want the power of the Holy Ghost. I don't want the ground to be barren. He said, bring me a new cruise. So he said, put salt therein. See that? We just talked about salt, didn't we? Oh, man, he's here. He said, bring me a new cruise. Bring me a new vessel. I ain't going to talk about the new cruise, the new vessel. 
Yeah. That, that's a New Testament principle. Well, how many know you're a new vessel? Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Uh, how many know you're a new vessel? Yes. All of us, we're new yes. vessels. We're a new man. Yes. We're a new creation yes. in Christ Jesus. He said, bring me a new vessel. He was basically saying, don't bring me the method that you did previously. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Bring me a new method. Yeah. Bring me a new container. Yeah. Yeah. Bring me a new ideology. Yeah. Because see, in the old place, the ground was barren and the water was not. I need a new cruise. I need a new vessel. Because the vessel of previous times was a vessel of this hour. I got to have a vessel of honor because this is the new season. This is a new day, like Prophet was saying. Amen. We're in a new season. It's a new day. And a new mindset. So we can't put the old wine and new wine and old wine skin. So we need something new. And God is doing new things. Yes. He yes. wants us to walk in the newness of life. Yes. He said, bring me a new cruise. He said, I'm going to put some salt in it. And they brought it to him. And he went forth into the spring of waters and cast the salt therein. And said, thus saith the Lord, I have healed these waters. There should not be from hence any death yes. or barren land. Yes. The land going to yield this increase. Yes. Yes. Tell your neighbor, the land going to yield this increase. Yes. Do you know what that means? I'm going to help you out. The Bible says we're the salt of the earth. Huh? If we, if, but see, he also says, when he wrote to him, he said that grace is like salt. I ain't got time. Great. He said he seasoned with grace. Seasoned with grace is like salt. So when grace is placed into the flow that's corrupt, it heals the land. And there's no death in the land. Let me help you out. We have too many messages that's bringing death in the land. Our eschatology is bringing death to the land. Our eschatology is making the land barren. Oh, boy. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So, but, yes, 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 yes. 